you look at this season, there's a lot of young guys that came into the lineup. You know, Cam and, and Sean, they were here. They said the rebound, the the rebuild could be quick. It could be a quick turnaround. You know, when you see what the young guys did and, and the veterans who could be back, how do you kind of see things going moving forward here? Yeah, um, I would agree. I think uh, the step that uh, some of those young guys made this year. Uh, and just the feel around the room, I think, was a little bit different from maybe the year past and uh, the belief within uh, guys and, and throughout the year. Obviously not where uh, we want to be, but uh, this is the situation we're in, and um, we have a lot of young guys that uh, that have stepped up in bigger roles. I think you saw it in the last two months or so. They're getting more opportunity and, and uh, playing against some top guys and, and uh, really getting their feet wet. and. and you always don't get that opportunity as a young guy and, and uh, to play those big minutes and, and be in key situations. So I think it, it can only help down the road. Um, we have a, a couple young forwards that, uh, that I think can, can be very valuable for us uh, going forward. So it's exciting for, for us and them. And um, it's going to be a big summer for a lot of those guys. When you talk about the younger guys, is there any guy specifically that has stood out to you? I think uh, probably right off the top of my head is Tipper. Uh, I think he took a massive step, um, was dominant in uh, a lot of games, especially when TK was out and uh, kind of took over that uh, that role for us. And um, Frosty takes a huge step, scores 20 goals or close to, I think. and. Um, Play some good hockey for us, and and Katesy plays out of position, plays uh, center all year, and plays against the top guys. And I thought he did a hell of a job. So um, there's there's those three guys that uh, kind of come to mind, and then you have Yorkie on the back end that I thought looked uh, very good again, poised with the puck and um, makes plays, and and very skilled, and and uh, looks like he can run a power play. So. You have those pieces come up, and uh, they're not super young. Even Forrester, he comes up and, and looks really good. So uh, they're not super young, but it's it's tough to get going in this league, and I think they did. And um, yeah, time will tell. Scott, you, uh, you guys obviously would have wanted, you would have wanted for the season to go differently in terms of standings, but this was for you your best statistical year by a lot. You broke 40 points, you had your most goals in your career. I guess. How do you try to balance, you know, having pride in your own individual accomplishments with the disappointment of, of where the team finished? Yeah, that's a good question. Because uh, to be honest, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, I signed here long term. I, I want to be uh, playing meaningful hockey when it gets nice outside. I think that's the best time to play. Um, I really hope uh, these young guys can experience playoff hockey in Philly because uh, I don't think it's like any other. So. That's uh, obviously you want to you want to do well for yourself and, and help the team and um, to be given the opportunity on the power play first time where I've kind of been on the power play all year and, and uh, get those looks and it's playing 20 minutes a night and uh, playing against uh, other team's top lines and um, I got a ton of opportunity to, to kind of show uh, what I could do so um, I'm thankful for that but uh, yeah it was um, decently happy with my year obviously uh, you, you want to do more and, and uh, think you can bring more to the table but um, to be able to be put in those situations and, and succeed in some of them um, it feels good for your game and, and all the hard work that you do put in in the summer and um, I've been around for a little bit of time now and, and uh, to get those looks uh, now it's uh, feels good Going off the <coughs> How important is that in terms of confidence going into next year? And how have you, just as the guy wearing the letter, try to help foster that confidence in some of these younger guys? Yeah, and, and kind of like what I touched on before, I think it's everyone has their own path and, and uh, comes up in different ways. But uh, a lot of guys took great steps forward. And, and like you said, a lot of uh, 
career years, I thought TK was dominant in most of the games he played in and, and something that uh, he can definitely build on. But, uh, yeah, you try and keep that confidence going into next year. Sometimes bounces go your way that year and uh, you have five or ten more points or five or ten more goals, and um, sometimes it happens that way. So um, you try and use that uh, going into the summer and, and uh, try and help your game and, and maybe do some of the same stuff that you did in previous summers and, and add to it. But uh, the confidence, I think, is uh, is a big thing and, and some people don't believe in it, but uh, I'm a big believer in confidence and, and uh, getting those puck touches and, and uh, I thought uh, some guys uh, definitely stepped up in, in the absence of, of some of our key guys who have been out all year. Scott, a lot of guys have talked positively about steps that were taken on the penalty kill this year. How do you think that positive attitude might help you guys take a bigger step forward next year? Yeah, I thought uh, thought our penalty kill uh, kind of dwindled there near the end of the year and um, was losing us hockey games, I guess, and, and our special teams, our, our power play um, wasn't very good this year at all. Um, so. Uh, special teams are a huge part of this game and, and uh, it helps you win hockey games and, and you see most of those playoff teams are usually in the top 15 in both categories and um, usually top 10 are the elite teams um, so that's something that you have to work on but I think uh, the way Bradshaw teaches uh, the penalty kill and just teaches the game is um, really good for the young guys and, and uh, for myself uh, he, he was great on the penalty kill, just the way uh, he went about things. So um, you see a guy like TK who's never penalty killed in his career, and uh, I thought he flourished. And um, some guys took some big steps. Risto, I thought, was uh, was huge on our penalty kill, and and uh, our goalies were great too. So um, something that uh, we can definitely build on and, and get better at. But uh, your special teams have to be. Um, pretty good to, to be successful and, and it's got to win you hockey games a, a lot of the time. Scott, you're obviously a, a team leader. You're the only guy who wore the A. Torts has talked a lot this year about this year being for him figuring out who's you know part of the solution, who needs to go. I guess, has he involved you at all or anybody higher up involved you at all in terms of trying to figure out who, who should be part of this moving forward? Um, no, I haven't talked to anyone about that uh, so far, but uh, yeah, I guess everyone will have their, their conversations today and, and uh, speak their mind and, and uh, how they feel um, their season went and, and what's moving forward, but uh, yeah. I'm not getting any younger, and, and uh, you obviously want to win in this league. I think uh, that's why you play the game, and um, I've said it before. I want to be here and be part of this solution and, and uh, help these young guys out and um, try and take that next step for this franchise, and, and uh, I want to be here for it. But, uh, yeah, time will tell with uh, with Danny. I think he's got he's to put his fingerprints on, on this and, and what he wants to do with this with this team. So... Uh, we'll see what happens this summer and, and closer to the draft and, and go about it uh, that way. So as, as the only guy to wear a letter on your jersey, I was just curious how your relationship evolved with, with John Tortorella. Like, did he start to seek you out more to get the pulse of the locker room? How did that kind of shake out? Yeah, um, to be honest, we didn't have that many conversations. Probably um, a couple here and there, um, just about little things throughout the year on the road. Um, yeah, just a little logistical stuff maybe, and then uh, throughout the year just talked about uh, where the group was at and, and how we were feeling. So um, it's tough when you get into that last month and uh, you're not playing for anything. You're obviously, you're in the NHL, you're playing for the Flyers. It's uh, You have that pride, but uh, it sucks. It, it really does uh, to, to play meaningless games and, and to have uh, nothing to look forward to. So. Um, the last month was definitely long, but uh, something that I hope to grow with uh, me and Torts uh, throughout the summer and, and uh, have those conversations. But uh, I, can't, I can't say enough good things about Torts for myself. He gave me the opportunity, um, gave me great looks, and, and uh, treated me uh, very uh, fairly and, and with a ton of respect. So uh, I appreciate that. 
when we talked to Van Riemsdyk earlier, he mentioned the relationship between you two and how you're going to be friends for a long time after this. And I think you've spoken about how much his leadership has helped you grow as a leader as well. Just what has it meant to you to play with him over the years and especially this season to be a part of his milestone uh, goal a couple games ago? Yeah, that was awesome. My dad actually uh, texted me before the game. He, he was hoping that I assisted on his 300th goal. So uh, lucky I won the face off and um, scored. I was pretty excited for him. But uh, the ultimate pro reamer is, I think, and, and I think anyone will say that, he probably knows he's not coming back and, and probably knew that for a little bit. Um, still cares about the young guys, the team. Was still trying uh, to find ways to, to help us win hockey games uh, throughout off the ice um, and on the ice. And a uh, really great human being that, uh, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a lifelong friend and, and someone that uh, uh, I'll be friends with for a while. So he. I can't say enough good things about Reamer and, and what he brings on a day-to-day -day basis and um, the way he handled himself throughout the, the situations that he's gone through here the last uh, the last couple of years. So uh, good for him and and uh, can't wait to spend a little bit of time with him here. Scott, over the uh, course of the season, you basically get to play with everybody more or less, um, but there was a five-week stretch in there. I think middle of December to later part of January. There literally wasn't a single lineup change. It was the same lines for five straight weeks. Um, was that stretch of the season good for continuity and getting to, you know, pull things together on the ice as a team? Yeah, I think so. And um, anytime you can, I guess, try and build that chemistry throughout, uh, especially for some of those guys like Frosty and Tipper who were playing together and, and – uh, really finding themselves, I guess, and, and uh, finding their offensive game together. Um, I think it goes a long way, and I think Reamer helped out with that too, touching on that. Uh, just the on the bench things uh, that people don't see so much, uh, I think uh, was huge. And um, yeah, I think it helps. And, and uh, it's going to be those young guys, the core, that uh, that are going to come up here together and, and uh, try and build something. and. Um, for them to, to be able to get that experience, uh, kind of like what I touched on before, but those big situations playing against Pasternak and McDavid on a, on a nightly basis, I think uh, can only help you.